usually the problem that we have uh, is the refreshments. So in December we had lots of refreshments to go around. Today, the uh, uh, is getting the night, so you can practice and this machine, depending on the number of people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so a little bit about user group. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if everybody is aware of this, but if, uh, our user group is a uh, chapter of the PASS, our professional association for vehicle search. Uh, I recommend that you go and sign up on this site and uh, there are more resources. Uh, there are lots of uh, virtual chapters which you uh, 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 sessions on a daily or weekly basis on lots of different topics. Uh, so we have a chapter of them. Uh, and we have a dog piece happening today. Uh, I hope all of you have dropped in your answer sheets inside one of those boxes. If not, I have one box at the back here. Drop it in before the meeting. Uh, before meeting starts. Okay. So towards the end, we'll be uh, drawing on this, uh, drawing one of those as uh, and we'll be giving you uh, a gift pack, a gift pack with a gift pack, a gift pack, a t-shirt, and a few more stuff. Plus, if you pay uh, attention, uh, each session there will be three questions asked, and we can give more prizes. Okay. So, uh, we'll introduce today's speakers. Um, first off, we have Dr. Srinath Pereira. Uh, he is uh, Director of Research at WSO2. I'm sure a lot of you have uh, been to his other big data sessions. Uh, very interesting things that he comes up with. And then we have Dinesh Asa. Uh, he's the so VP and he works for Lisa. Uh, so he'll be uh, talking on a related topic, which will be data mining. So he has been doing data mining uh, series uh, uh, during last year, so it's a continuation of that. So, uh, Invite Dr. Srinathaya over here. Thank you. I generally shout at the end of And so, uh, this is this is actually two talks in one. Okay, 
Okay. Okay. So uh, let me start talking about this this, uh, this paper. So okay, how how many of you have heard about the person called uh, Michael Stonebury? Okay, he he is a MIT professor, but he he is the database guy. He, he his team actually did uh, put his Postgres SQL. Uh, then lot of like lot of big work on databases he has So he wrote this paper called What Goes Around Comes Around. Uh, it's a survey over uh, about 30, uh, actually almost 50 years of database related work. How people like end up with the relational databases what they try, etc. So the, on this paper, uh, so this he wrote after uh, uh, the, this noise girl things are starting. He was actually saying that uh, the most new things, like for example graphs, all this stuff, people had tried before. That doesn't necessarily mean this time it won't work. It didn't work last time, but uh, the so, so the story goes like, uh, 60s, 70s people started with hierarchical uh, databases, hierarchical data models, they model data as hierarchy. Then they, they figured, okay, that's not, uh, okay, that can't uh, capture graphs. So, okay, fine, we'll generalize, we'll have graphs. Right, then at 70s, uh, they, they actually did something that's, not done very risk open, which is that they go and simplify. They actually say graph are too much. We we'll just come to the relational model. Relational is much simpler model. Then they add the entry relationships. They extended it, and later people added semantics. But I mean, semantics is used in some sense. But I mean, by no means like the database. It is, we haven't really come up with it. Okay. But if you if you look through this, almost for 30 years, database is database and relational model is how you store it. Right? In computer science, that's internet. Right? The, 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 I mean, computers don't look the same for 30 years. Right? They are so different. They are like, how do you know? million times faster, etc. So, so, so that tells a lot also about relation models. So, so for all these years, uh, if you want to, if you are a programmer who write, a programmer or architect or somebody who design systems, the, if you want to store data, the relation is pretty simple. Generally, it is a relation database. And uh, if it is, it's, if it is a toy, you might go and stuff on the files, right? And uh, then you will, when you start pro learn programming, you will very quickly teach that uh, if you want serious stuff, don't put it in the file system. Database transactions. Okay. So all these were good, but now the things start to change. Uh, so what have start to happen is. People start to pick bigger and bigger systems. These systems start to get more and more users. And then cloud computing, multi-cores, all these big things happen. Uh, so the, uh, the, first, uh, the first people who, who uh, so okay. these end up building very big systems. The first people who wanted to build these bigger systems were places like Google, uh, Facebook, it wasn't around, it's, it's Amazon, etc. Uh, okay, so uh, so now people want to build bigger systems. Now, but the 90% uh, the of the, the all, almost the only architecture people know is you have a database, you have a uh, Maybe a middle layer, maybe a left layer, and if you want to scale, you uh, you can put enough of the front, the web layer, etc. 
but the database, uh, uh, you don't know how to scale. Most databases used to be in the single node or two nodes, uh, active passive or right. Okay, fine. So, uh, so you start with single node. Uh, when it's not working, you go for two nodes. <coughs> then now you are then if even if your system is even bigger, now you're in trouble. Uh, so, okay. how many? Um, how many of you have the term sharding? So the, the answer is what they call sharding. The sharding is basically I take the data, I look at my database, big database. Uh, I can't put everything in queries, too slow when I put everything. Uh, now I have to somehow take this data and break it to two parts or in parts and put different databases. Right, this break you can say that like first table here, second table here, third table here. Or you can take the table and say, okay, half of table goes here, half of all the tables goes here, half of all the tables goes there. Or you can do many other ways. Okay, great. That breaks the thing into pieces. Uh, now how do you search? Uh, now this is where you start in trouble. Uh, so if uh, if you put like this table here and that table here, now as long as I just do queries on one table, you're fine. There's no trouble. You just want to know where it is. So there, keep it. Uh, but now if you are supposed to do a join, and if your tables has million entries each, uh, you, you have the join is very hard. The, I mean, there are tricks you can play, but end of the day, you have to move a lot of data from one to the other. Uh, so, so this way are the things start to break down, right? Uh, the, the chart, there are very serious, serious database guys who could do set up a very, uh, work out the sharding, make it work, and uh, but still then you need people who keep in, and it's very hard to change, etc. So, uh, people, uh, no, no, uh, up to uh, uh, so then people come up with something called captive, right? The, uh, the, this, this, the, here the cap CAP stands for consistency, availability and partition tolerance. Uh, the cap theorem says you cannot have all three in large scale. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is, it is not a theorem as if like mathematically proven, it's an observation more or less. But, uh, it's <coughs> so what, what this means <coughs> is that either you can choose to, uh, no, okay, the, the problem is I have lot of data, I want to store it somewhere. I can't store it one minute, you have to store it multiple. When you do that, Either you can keep all the data agreed with each other, okay. or you can uh, you can only answer sometimes. That's the, if you give up availability, somebody say, can I read it? I'm not now because the something wrong. Come back later, and then I figure it out. I'll answer it. That you give up availability. The partial tolerance means uh, the system can work even if um, the system is broken into two parts. Now. If you look at the relational databases, uh, you would have all these three. Okay, that means you can't scale. Okay, so the uh, so so all all this thing and all this discussion meant, or oh, the actually underlying observation was that uh, the relational databases are a system that. Uh, it's it's a it's it's a what you call one size fit all solution. The the catch with the one size fit all is that it doesn't perfectly work for anything. Basically, uh, the, it's a it's a general solution. It works uh, for very wide different set of use cases. Its assumptions are very general. 
like because it says you have this model, you can update it, whatever update you see at the other side, all these nice things. But it can't scale, right? Can't, actually, the can't, it can't, in the main reason can't scale is that journey problem after you break up the data. Um, okay, so now then uh, what happens was uh, some people start to see that, no, actually the places like Google, Amazon, etc. They start to see that, okay, if you have to give all these guarantees, if any anything he wrote, I can see immediately all these guarantees. Uh, then it's very hard to solve this problem. But a lot of problems don't need all these guarantees. <coughs> right? For example, for Google system, basically you scroll, record the data in the web, somebody says, you answer. But there's no real requirement that when I go and put my web page here, that you search in here has to see it right now. Even if it's next week, it's fine. Right? That's the truth. So uh, then, basically, they say, you, I, we don't need all these guarantees as if transactions, no. We just want to store an answer, give us the best answer. Right? So uh, then they, okay, so. Uh, they said, okay, you don't need this all the SQL support and transactions. So we build new, more simpler systems with this, give you less guarantees. Uh, they call it no SQL. In the men's that, in, in they meant that you, I, we don't need SQL. Uh, but uh, they, uh, people, it get some traction, people talk about that, but then People start to realize, yes, but there are these other use cases where you need this stuff. Like you need SQL, etc. So they rename the thing to say not only SQL. So uh, by now you can use, do SQL and this other not, no, non SQL. Uh, okay, which is fine. At least uh, at the, uh, now, there was a lot of files at that time. Still, a bit less files. Uh, at least personally, I I mean I don't uh, most these bytes the there's a solution that works for a problem for this problem this solution works better that run that this one works better it's 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 mostly at least for me most cases it's a problem of uh, it's a it's a more problem of what worked for where versus the this one is the greatest versus that one is the greatest so okay. But, now all these are good, but this uh, suddenly changed stuff for the program. If you are a programmer, now we are in trouble. Because if you want to store data, you don't know which one to choose. There are so many. There's Cassandra, there's MongoDB, there's, uh, there's React, there's Hazelcast, uh, etc, etc. And uh, that's graph databases, etc. And uh, if you ask somebody if this works, everybody says yes. You can do it with this one. And uh, if you ask why is that better, you get very different, complicated answers. And uh, uh, so, so that decision has become very complicated. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so uh, now from. Uh, next, what I'm trying to talk about is that, uh, I mean, it's not the way to give a select run, but few, few uh, critical things when you try to select answers. Like, given a use case, how could you select? I'm trying to answer that in, uh, at least partially. So, so the first thing, uh, I'm, I'm, let me tell a few things that matters, and then come back and try to say if it's when it's like this, you could use this. So the first part is that uh, what kind of data you deal with. So this is the general category, categorization of data. The unstructured means things like. 
uh, documents like natural language documents like the web uh, etc uh, or uh, image or etc which there's no rigid structure uh, there's a structure means general data in the database tables fields defined clear you can go and search etc uh, semi structured means uh, they have a structure, but they don't have a very hard skip. For example, if you take XML file, it do have a structure. It says there's a child and parents and all this stuff, but it doesn't tell the full schema. Okay, so and it's same for the graph, etc. So these generally these are different classes you deal with. And then you have problem of searching. This actually the uh, most more root for most all these scale and computations etc come from search. I mean you can store it's not a huge problem, right? Whatever the data you just put somewhere. It's it's the complication comes when I want to get it out. You want to get it out fast. Uh, so uh, the with unstructured data generally people search using reverse index. Basically, you remember this, for example, if you have some document, you remember with this word on that document kind of information, and given a word, you could find the document and let you search. Uh, the the semi structured data search through, um, generally, you search through like this XPath or XCORI like structure. You tell, like, for example, give me something has this structure. And uh, uh, so the, here the searches are very, very specific for different, different use cases. The, finally, when you have structured data, you could search it in very complicated ways. So uh, these searches, let me uh, classify them to two classes. First is you want, I have the key, I store something with the key. Somebody give me the key, I have to look it up. Hash, my glorified hash. The next one is a where clause, I have a lot of data. It says give me this with this condition, that condition. The third case is queries. Uh, these are complicated queries, sorry, with joins. So I have this data set, this data set, join this and give me something. The condition uh, to um, evaluate the condition, you have to join that data. That's the third class. The fourth class is you are not really in a hurry, so you can go offline and try. Uh, then the, the the last thing you worry about is uh, scale. How much you can scale? Okay. Uh, the, the scale scalability means the ability to add more resources and handle a bigger problem. Right. So uh, in a perfect scalable database that doesn't exist. Almost. Uh, uh, the ideal case, if I have 10 MB, maybe I can handle it one machine. One GB, one machine, fine. Uh, I have 10 GB, maybe one machine, maybe three machines. Like, okay, I have one terabyte, 100 machines, maybe one petabyte, 1000 machines. If you can add more uh, resources, you could handle any use case. That's the ideal case. Uh, so these systems, I. Uh, Classify saying that small systems, one, one, two, three, few nodes, scalable systems like ten nodes, uh, highly scalable system, hundreds and thousands. Of them. I'll bring all these together. And then you have different consistency levels. Uh, transactions is the full everything you have. The atomic operations means you can do few things together in the one class, but it's not fully transaction. In a fully transactional case, the difference is in within a transaction, if I read something, right, even if somebody else from a different transaction edit the data I already read, I continue to see a consideration view that edit is being taken out. Okay? Uh, but here it has none. It is not there. Here, yeah, the only thing is I can do these three things together. Everything happens or none happens. That part is there, but it doesn't give you isolation. Uh, 
uh, higher classes in mutual consistency means I did. Show me the best value you have. Right? There's no error. Okay. So, so for uh, so I'll take each case, each structure, same structure, and structure separately. Describe it in detail. Okay, so okay, this is showing three dimensional data in three dimensions in the table. Right? So you have this, this is this part, they say you need to handle different scales. This shows and uh, this is the kind of queries you want to do. Okay? Now each of this scale one I have break by the um, the consistent levels you need, right? So okay, for example, if you want to if you want to your use case need don't need too much scale small one, right? And if you need transactions, right? Use database. Right? And with primary key, actually, all these. So, uh, in, in, so if you look through this, you can use databases for any of these cases because it is small, right? Uh, because it is small scale. Okay. Now, okay, fine. If you want to go scale more, right? Now, the this partition databases means. You have to sharding. Okay. Uh, now, even with sharding, the joins are complicated. That's why they carry question marks. Okay. Uh, the for the if you don't need joins, right? If as long as you don't need joins, you could build pretty scalable system using column. Um, key value pair database and color family database. Color family database example is Cassandra. And key value that's a, um, and Cassandra is also a key value one. Then the, the Amazon build the famous one. Uh, uh, how, uh, so actually, uh, none of these are completely key value because the key value is not too useful. So that most people now go for color families which key value well, is subset of it. Okay. And, uh, okay, so now still, if you need transactions, now Cassandra do 50% uh, of the transactions. But they don't do isolation. They might, they are not still doing isolation. So if you need full transactions, uh, still you have to go and do this. Cassandra to transactions. They, they, they didn't have transaction, now they have transaction support. And uh, they, yes, it's, you can uh, you can define transaction, it's atomic, but it's, there's no, it's not isolated. Like if you, there's two transactions happen, you don't like isolate the transaction from each other. Uh, then for the, if you are trying to go for very scalable systems, uh, okay, in, Thousands of nodes and joins doesn't work. Okay, that's why it says red, right? And for other cases, the <coughs> families and key value systems would work. Okay. So uh, the I think the the summary, like very quick summary, could be in here in small scale system database. Don't compare it to. In the middle, it goes this Cassandra, uh, etc. Where the Cassandra MongoDB couch, etc. Where uh, the, I think that that well, the column family databases has worn, I think, to a recent extent. So uh, it is, I think, relational database here, column family database in the middle. The highly scalable story is not very clear. Column families, uh, of course, they claim for everything, but I mean, at least the, when we build systems, <laughs> it does not. At least it is not trivial to set up those systems and make it work at those things. And uh, now if you handle unstructured data, 
they, they are generally handled with reversing lasers. Basically, end of the day, what you do is you build a index. Post-search. Okay. And uh, so if you just need key value, you can just do it with the database. Sorry, distributed file system. But if you need more, then uh, these these are the complicated indexes. The metadata catalog. The metadata catalog is a server that collects the metadata about all your data have, and you can search. It will tell all oh, that kind of data is there. So you don't keep the data, only keep the metadata. Uh, so and then there are systems like Solar that you let you can fix it. Uh, uh, so if you want to do semi-structured, handle semi-structured data, each type of semi-structured data they really have their own kind of databases. There's like XML databases, they are dying now mostly. But uh, then graph databases are coming up very well. Then there's this data structured databases, uh, like things like Redis, etc. Where you can store lists, maps, etc. So, uh, so uh, the, and the summary for that part of the talk uh, is that there aren't one magic solution that works for you. We had the solution like that, but our scale was much lower. Now we try to solve problems at much larger scale. Now there's no one solution. So uh, it is, you have to select what works for kind of use cases you are trying to okay, so, And uh, this, this talk, uh, after the talk came, after this, so this article covers most of things I talked about, this plan. Two or three years, uh, two thousand eleven, three years. So, okay, now let me switch to the other topic. This is the topic I talk more, I mean, this is the topic I work on mostly nowadays, etc. Uh, so, uh, the historically again, when you want to analyze and understand the data, you go for the database, you, write, you first use to do a lot of queries. Then you do, use to do a lot of, like set up cubes and go and uh, analyze that. But the cubes were a very, very nice solution, but it didn't came to the mass of people like databases. Like out of the people who work with databases, only a smaller subset, much smaller subset work with cubes and things. Uh, so then, uh, and they were very expensive actually. They are still there isn't uh, a great open source or like very widely uh, used uh, oil uh, oil. Uh, sorry, no, not all. Uh, the, the analytic process in database. Pentaho is there, but I mean, uh, it's not as polished as most of us. Then people uh, were looking for solutions. Uh, our name, you and Google came up with contributors. Right. Then, uh, so that start this, uh, this movement, which is to move the analysis out of the database. Right, and give it to the world of programmers and you build infrastructure that let you do it. And then people actually uh, start doing very interesting things. I'll show some of examples. Uh, then uh, they end up coining this term big data. Uh, so the idea is that there's a lot of many kind of different data. Uh, we want to understand uh, to we want to analyze and understand what's going on. And the challenges posed by this data are due to volume, a lot of data. Velocity, data coming very fast. Variety means the data coming come in many formats. Veracity means that there may be some missing data, uh, or there, there may be missing data or wrong data, etc. So, uh, so all these created this almost new, it's not a new topic, but new focus or new cool thing for big data. Uh, so let me give a 
simple example of kind of things is try to do because the most example people talk about very complicated. Let me give you a very simple. I'm sure you get each of you get enough spam mails, right? Now, uh, generally, uh, spam mail success rate success rate is somebody click on that. Okay, not sorry, wrong word. Not spam mail promotion campaign, right? I'm not talking about the mail. Email come from Nigeria asking you to like to help you move the money. This is uh, this actual real promotion mail. They try to sell you stuff, right? Uh, the distinction is not. Talk too much about the distinction between the two types, uh, but in general, people the return rate. Somebody click on that link and uh, visit in your website because you send an email is very very less, like one percent. So let's say you are trying to pre reach ten thousand people. Uh, so uh, then uh, you are trying to uh, reach ten thousand people. You know it's one percent uh, chance that you beat this one percent. So you need one million people, which let's say the buying the email, sending email, all this stuff costs you two million. Uh, so instead, if you can find of or oh, one million people, if you can find some six percent, uh, so find a subset of people, right? Subset of one fourth of people who give you six percent return. You could do this for much less and still get to more people, right? Now uh, the uh, this you I mean the, this kind of thing you do with big data you you try to figure out out of this one million two hundred fifty k who more likely to respond to you. Now uh, the one important point is your success rate improved from one percent to six percent. Okay, uh, in at least the. Yeah. If you take an out of context, six percent success rate doesn't mean anything. Nobody get impressed, but it may be huge difference, right? Because the main people talk about big data, they talk about these things magically predict the future as exactly it happens. I mean, there are use cases like that, but that's not the real key. It is the one percent that goes to six percent that make a real difference, and that's. So that's why yeah, I mean there are there are predictions, but there are better guesses, right? So you should think about it in that sense. So the reason we worry about this is is because of at least I mean fine why we care we care because there's a lot of room to improve. If you look at the world, the world is very inefficient. For example, about 30 percent of the food. Get based between the, the farm and the mm, your plate. In US only, US actually about 40 percent. General Electric has this initiative, what they call one percent initiative. They say, let's go ahead and improve one percent of something. Like for example, in trains in the world, if you improve the rather D trains where you run G. Trends. If they improve one percent, that's about two billion dollars per year. And U.S. healthcare, if you improve one percent, it is twenty billion dollars per year. And to contrast, to compare, Sri Lanka total exports nine billion dollars per year. Okay, so you you could see why why people care for that, right? So and of course there are like there are a lot of other things like you could actually uh, save lives, I mean, etc. Uh, so so the reason, but the reason people like get excited and try to solve these problems is there's a lot of impact. There's a lot of things you could do. Uh, so the what you can do uh, very lightly you can classify into four classes. The hindsight means. I want to know what happened. Something happens, I want to know what happened. The oversight means I want to know what is happening right now and maybe go and ability to change it. Do it fast enough so like uh, so it comes going down, okay, you do something, right? Or uh, company is not doing good, you do something. Uh, 
the inside means you, I want to explain why things are happening. Right? This, the better terms is data mining. Next one. Right? The foresight is you try to predict what will happen. Right? So these use cases come under these four um, classes. So there are a lot of tools. Uh, there are a lot of tools uh, to do this. So I, I classified it under, so this one we was the world, we got those tools. So the x-axis shows uh, how fast you have to get the result. Y-axis shows how much data you could handle. So if you can wait for the wait few minutes, more than at least few minutes for get the result, that's MapReduce. MapReduce, Hadoop, Spark, etc. Uh, that's called back processing. Okay. Now, if you want results very fast, stock markets, um, uh, traffic, etc., where you want results very fast, that's called real time analytics. There are two technologies called one called configuration processing, one called stream processing to handle those solutions. If you want something in between, and obviously this is expensive. This side is expensive. Otherwise, you always. Uh, this side is expensive, and the kind of things you do can do here are less than what we can do here, right? So there are cases you need some things in between. So uh, the, there are like you use indexes, and there are tools like uh, BigQuery, and there are technologies like InMemory Computing. So there's something called uh, SAP, uh, SAP HANA, BigQuery, that's uh, etc. So they sit in between. Uh, so, uh, now, if you want no hindsight, you don't know what happened. You don't really care knowing now. You go and uh, you use back processing techniques. Hadoop, Spark, etc. And uh, uh, for example, um, the, the, the market example, <coughs> I discussed something like that. Oh, uh, this is a target marketing. So it's the same use case here. Like uh, you, you try to understand which, uh, like so here, for example, you have different segments. You try to figure out which part gave you most profit versus we have you lost money, etc. Those kind of things. Uh, yeah. Now, if you want oversight, oversight, or you want to. The disaster in the past. You use uh, real time analytics. Okay. So the uh, so one technology is complex processing. So in there you write still you write a query that looked like a little bit like SQL, but it could and uh, analyze the data as they come in, right, and give you responses within less than minute, less than minutes. So uh, uh, there is so actually if uh, I when I put the slides I put the link. I'll, I'll, I'm skipping this right now. Uh, so it's a it's a video on uh, a video we did with the data collector from a football game with the sensors on the ball on the etc. and uh, visualizing what's going on and adding inflations etc. So I'll when I put the slides, I'll put in the link. Uh, So, so all this done with like 
they are like quarries that look like a spider. And everything was done, I think it's like 150 lines of code. It's like, quarries are not simple, they are, they are compact and complicated, but it's about 150 lines of quarries to do all this stuff. Well, UI is done different, right? Uh, so, okay, let me. And this is on uh, YouTube. So, uh, and. Uh, So, uh, okay. Now, when you try to do this analysis, uh, so when you try to do this analysis, uh, interesting things happen. There are kind of challenges that you didn't realize. Uh, so, uh, so this is this uh, this famous story. Uh, basically, this is on World War Two. Uh, the lot of Allied planes were shot down, right? Or they like about every year they lost like forty percent of planes. So they wanted to do better. So they wanted to put armor, more armor. But you know how the planes work? You can't put like lot of armor because it like then the heavier the, the slow it flies and etc. All these problems. Right? So what did they they did was they go and did the analysis on where I, the, it, they were hit on the planes that return, right? It looked like this. And they were going to put a lot of armor on the places they were hit. Okay. Then that guy comes and say, wait, 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 I used to be. Then they ask, oh, why this what we did? Why is it wrong? And uh, then he said, yes, it is wrong because you only have half of the data. These are the planes that were shot on here and came back. Right? So that's fine. I mean, it's okay to shot on those places. Then you will come back. Right? Actually, you half of the data is missing. That is when you shot on other places where you don't come back. That's where you won't die. Right? Obviously, I mean, if you hit on here, you're in trouble, right? Obviously. So, so, uh, so, so all these, these, uh, uh, so so this is one of the main big challenge of big data because the big data or the analyzing data like this can never tell something caused by something because uh, so good, uh, if you want to understand this thing more like go and read about causality the only way to do a causality is to do detect like causality you have to do a control experiment you. Take two groups, you give something to these guys, don't give to these guys, and then compare. Right? But in big data, you can't do that. It's, it's just the data collector from the world. You can sometimes uh, mimic it other ways, but which means you can say correlation. You can say these two things might happen together, but you can never tell that this thing actually caused that thing. That this is a very common mistake. Uh, you, people make, and I mean, you don't even make it. Uh, so, uh, again, I uh, not enough time to explain it, but uh, if you read, go and read about causality, um, if you interested in this. Then, uh, if you want to understand insights, now we have uh, hindsight, oversight, now insight. This is data mining. Thanks. Next talk with me. Uh, skip there. Oh, so uh, this is actually a word I am also known. This is uh, taking the uh, cell phone uh, access logs from Sri Lanka and trying to analyze the how people move through time and time in the day, etc. Like, uh, like uh, the, basically in the day, all these areas get drained, everybody end up in Tarambu, and then afternoon everybody goes away. So I'll put the slides. Uh, if you follow these links, like there's a lot of lot of interesting things, right? And the finally, if you try to you foresight, if you're trying to predict, this is the world of machine learning, uh, uh, basic machine learning algorithms. So I'm uh, pretty much out of time. So let therefore let me give you this example and finish. 
this is basically uh, a famous example. Uh, it's a predictive maintenance. Very, I mean, one very famous instance of this is aircraft. Uh, when you manage aircraft, okay, the aircraft going down very bad, right? And even something goes wrong, uh, you won't fix it very fast because the aircraft generally. They are so expensive, their depreciation is so high that you want people basically measure your efficiency by how how long they were grounded. Like you try to keep it going. So uh, the, the in these models, the guessing where things might fail. So every aircraft generate uh, gigabytes of data for every run. So you have a lot of data what's going on. So anything, even if you are a little bit unsure, this might lead to a fault, you're better off replacing because of the so so there are a lot of work like that and there are a lot of uh, if you the the big data part uh, I mean I I only told some parts there's a longer slide deck uh, etc and uh, if you're really interested I think I generally end up repeating this so, uh, okay, I think so. Officially, it's done. Uh, I'm supposed to ask three questions, and you, uh, you start. Uh, so, the first one: uh, Why does uh, join? Why does it is hard, very hard to scale joints? Okay, I'll get. So, uh, okay, if you have two databases and if you have some data, some data that's split across two databases, uh, how would you try to do a join? And it is a simplified method. Yes. You need to move the uh, millions of data across uh, the two nodes, different nodes. Okay. The network, so it is very expensive. So. Okay. Uh, so, how do you solve it? Shall we try to solve it? Uh, in large scales, you can't uh, join. So, so you yes. can either have, uh, like in the, in the cap theorem, you can either have a, a small theorem, medium scale, uh, and the joints, or else. Yes, okay. Yes, right. Fair enough. So, okay. That's done. Uh, okay. The second uh, okay, second question. Uh, so can somebody give me an example of a polar family database? A monadic. Uh, it is spelled a little differently. I'll <laughs> So, um, the last one, let me ask a uh, big data related question. Uh, okay, can somebody, uh, okay, uh, full quick answer might be complicated, but why doesn't, why can't you get causality? Why doing in a big data analysis? I'll let you. It's just a collection of variable data. Okay. And it's hard to get a control group and experiment. Okay. Uh, yes, I think it's. Could you try to elaborate a little bit more? It's fair, I take the answer. but. And why why does the control group and the uh, the why does it, uh, what does the control group and the the, the other group give you?
sorry guys, because uh, I got a lot of insight about uh, uh, NoSQL and uh, Big Data. So now it's time for refreshments. I think that's enough for that uh, So let's go have refreshments and come back in about five, seven minutes. And then start with the next